Hi, I'm Lily Madigan. Um, I was the first trans person to be a women's officer in the Labour Party in the United Kingdom. Hi, I am Angelique Kijo. I'm a singer songwriter from Benin, activist, UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador, and a co founder of, of the Fatonga Foundation. So, I was just wondering what lessons you've learned as an activist who's been in the game a lot longer than I have that you could pass on to me as someone who's just getting started out, really. Um, I've been political for about a year, but I... And the, the thing that is important for you to understand is ask yourself the reason why you want to be an activist. First mm -hmm. of all, that's the most important thing. And ask yourself, am I strong enough? That's the question you have to answer. Uh, my, in my case, being a, a, a woman, a little girl in Africa, when you're born a girl in Africa, you don't have an identity. You just belong to your father that you're the daughter of your father. And in my home where I grew up, my father was against that kind of um, thinking and that kind of practices. So he raised boys and girls equally and saying there's no difference in what the capacity of what you have to do. And my challenge I faced was jealousy and nastiness of people, basically. Because I was not fitting into the picture that make everybody feel comfortable about what a girl, a little girl should look like and should be doing. And I remember coming back from school when people had been throwing stones, sand, spitting on me, calling me whore, all kind of horrible uh, name. And I get home that day. I'm never going to forget. I feel so hopeless, so worthless. I mean, it's just, you, you feel like you you don't, you know, you're nobody. And my grandmother said to me, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I told her what happened and I said, anyway, I don't want to sing anymore because I don't want to go through this abuse anymore. And my grandmother said, okay, you're going to let people tell you who you are and what you're going to do? I said, no, but I don't want to be called prostitute. I said, what the, do you care about that? Are they your family? Are they your friends? Do you, do you respond to them in anything you do? Do anyone in this house tell you not to sing? The, answer was no. She said then, I have an advice for you. You can't let anyone define who you are. You cannot love everybody and everybody can't love you. As long as what you're doing help you be happy, empowers you to be the human being that you, you see yourself to be, just go far ahead and do it. Don't mind anybody. Well, that's such a powerful story. Thank you. Um, the bit that stuck out for me was when you said that people, that, that you felt that society had a problem with you because you were acting differently to the other girls. And um, mm -hmm. that really struck a chord with me because it reminded me of when I was at school and, and when I came out as trans and I wanted to be treated like the other girls and mm -hmm. they wouldn't. And they wouldn't use my new legal name or pronouns or let me use the girls dress code or spaces. And that's a really alienating thing. So I, I can sort of, on some level, imagine what it must have felt like for you. It, it, I, I, what you're saying ring a bell too in me. And that's mm. why my father always used to say to us, as long as you can speak up and challenge the person in front of you, then you can go anywhere in the world. And he says something also that really, those two things defines the person that I am today. He said, if you are afraid, you will never achieve anything. And fear is a very powerful weapon. It makes, it, it free us or it enslaves us. People that don't want to call you the name that you are now, it's because they are afraid of accepting you or because there is a fear that is deep inside of them about themselves. Because if you know who you are and you stand and you know who you are, what you stand for, no one should be afraid to you. You shouldn't see any other, other human being as a threat to you. But unfortunately, we live in a society where fear is embedded in everything, from politics all the way down to the market. So therefore, when you become an advocate, a, an activist, you have to know that those things are powerful. As long as you can talk to people, for them not to be afraid, you win every battle. Because yeah. once... That we just telling people racism is, is something that I live every day, everywhere I go. And 
I grew up in a family where my mom and dad said a human being is not a matter of color. Don't judge anyone based off their skin color. Speak to people. You will realize you might not have the same opinion, but you can discuss. As long as you can talk to each other, everything's going to be all right. So for me, everything starts with that first conversation. There are some people that you're never going to win on a side. And if you realize that after three times, just move on. Because you cannot spend your time trying to get people on board of something that they never can understand. There are some people that are willing to understand or that they're already understanding, but they are afraid of how they're going to be perceived by their family or their friends. And what you said about fear, I think, is, is quite relevant in the UK at the moment around trans rights, where a lot of the argument is is people who are scared um, or saying that they're scared and fearful of trans people and trans women being treated like other women. And when you break down the argument and have a conversation with most people, they realize quite quickly that those fears are unfounded and not evidence-based. And um, and there are those few people who just won't come around. But largely, I, I think you're right that just having a conversation with people, we're all people, and I think most of us just want the best thing. And a conversation can really bring around people. Because we have been tuned like that. The norm is being a woman, a man, period. We are all beings on this planet. If you accept that in, a, in, 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 the, in nature, why can't you accept the fact that as long as I'm happy, no one can tell me that I'm making the wrong choice. So if you're afraid, it means you're not happy too. Because if you're happy, you live happy within yourself. I always said, nothing comes from the outside, it comes from within. Your capacity of joy, of resilience, of love, of compassion and empathy is embedded in you or not? You got it or you don't get it? I, I always think like, when I was younger, my mom used to say that if I just picked one or two things and that I wanted to change in society and focused on them and read about them, and went to hear speak people, went to hear people speak about them. And then eventually when I was comfortable, I should speak up about those things. And um, I feel like I really learned from that when, I, when I've struggled with stuff like coming out at school and being a trans woman in politics, that you know, I have to be passionate about these things and I have to understand as much about it as I can and speak up about it. And that's how I bring people around and that's how I make change. So that's, that's a little lesson from my family that I've always been fond of. <laughs> Your mom was very smart to tell you that because when you love somebody you don't judge the person yes yeah. and that's the problem we have we are all being manipulated by the power in place it's all this is political and that's what i say when you instrumentalize people's pain for me it's not politics anymore it's just abuse mm. and we have to redefine what being a politician means what does it mean what do we need and what we want from the politician? We, the people, have to force them to be the leader that we want to. I think politics at the moment, it's quite disillusioning to so many people. Oh my um, God. <laughs> especially, if, especially in the US at the moment, it's quite... Uh, Everywhere you have those nasty people coming out. Why do we go around and vote for people that are despicable? What does it say about the society that we are? If you have to be powerful, you have to be the most nastiest human being on the planet. You mm -hmm. have to be tough. You have to be a thug. You have to be a psychopath. When we change our view of what we want to the lead, then we live in a better world. Then we won't be having this conversation anymore. We're going to be having a conversation about how do we make our education system better? How do we make our health system better? How do we create a society where everybody counts, everybody can dream, and everybody can live a decent life? How do we get here? How did we get here? Mm. I think like things, I, I think it almost feels a lot like time, a lot at times, like we have our rights very fragilely held. Um, like examples for me are, Trump coming in and 
not letting trans people serve in his military and taking away trans protections uh, for students in schools. And it seems like that's something, those are things that we took for granted. Um, certainly, I, I take stuff like that for granted in the UK. Yeah, I feel and, like, but it's a good wake up call though. Yeah. And I hope, well, from this wake up call, we're going to treat each other better and fairer. And never let the bullies come back to power. I hope yeah. not. We, we owe good. ourselves, the, we owe the future generation of every kind of walk of life to be part of this world. I agree. And like in the UK, we've just seen, um, well, not just last year, we saw Theresa May sign a coalition agreement with the Democratic Unionist Party, who are quite anti LGBT and just quite horrific. Um, so that goes back to what I was saying about rights feeling quite fragilely held. Um, I, th I think personally, like all of my activism has been realizing that mm -hmm. it isn't great, but also that I can change it. Mm -hmm. And at first I was, I was sort of like, I'm just changing this. Like I, I sued my school because I wanted to make it my school better for me but now I'm getting involved in politics because I want to make society better for everyone and I think mm -hmm. that might be a, a very rewarding um and un unintended outcome from Absolutely. people like Trump where where younger and more marginalized activists will rise up and sort of take back the political ground and I think if if our politicians at the moment can't sort out all of these problems that we've been talking about, then I think young people definitely will. And oh, I have a lot of faith in young people. Yeah, because the young people are the future. It's the one that they, or you wake up and you grab your future back and you are in total control of it, or you're going to have so much mess to deal with later. You're going to go, how do we get there? And then you look by, you say, well, when I was supposed to speak up, I didn't. Mm. When I was supposed to speak to stand up for us right, I didn't. And if we wait that one fraction of a second, we'll come back to square one. Yeah, and I think I think that's what I love most about young people. I mean, I, I feel so supported um, by the, the young section of my political party in this country. And just at university, I feel so accepted as a trans woman. And I think it just, in our minds, it isn't even a debate anymore. It's just when you look to older people, um, I mean, there are a few exceptions in all cases, obviously, but I, I'm very positive about the future. Me too. I'm always positive. Otherwise, I won't be doing what I've been doing for the last 40 years. Because <laughs> if you give up on life, like give up on you. And what, what happens to me can happen to anybody. Therefore, when I'm thinking in my activism and to fight for people, I fight for every people. It's not only for black people. It's not only for poor people. It's everybody. Because if my freedom is in danger, if I don't stand against somebody, I witness an injustice against somebody and I keep quiet, then I accept that I can be abused too. They are not voted for a category of people. They have voted in office to fight for every single citizen's right. And we have power. We have more power than we think. People that don't like, companies that don't like transgender or minority, don't spend your money buying their stuff. No, I won't. <laughs> and I, like in the US, we've seen black community swing elections. And I think that's such a powerful thing. Um, in the UK, I I know definitely that we've reached a point where if people are racist or LGBT phobic or xenophobic, I, I like to think we've reached a point where we wouldn't reward them. But that I think especially with things like Brexit here, um, oh. that there is a fear that it, it can still be targeted and um, and the youth are so against it, and it's such a it, it's such a contrast well, that we're seeing in politics at the moment between 
older people who want to leave and young people who very much want to remain. And I think it all kind of links together. Um, oh, yeah. We have the power to bring people to realize their own potential. That's where your success lies. As much as you can mobilize young kids, young people around you, we are all here for one goal, to make this, this planet of ours livable within the value accepting everybody's differences, no matter what, who they are and where they come from. Yeah, oh, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta yeah. go get to go to the airport. Oh, where are you going? I'm going back to Paris, then I'm going to Armenia. Amazing, have an amazing time. And it was so lovely to talk to you. In October 2, October 20th, I will be in London receiving a Lifetime Award from Song Lines. Wow. Incredible. So, if you're around, you want to come, let me know. I definitely will. Okay, I'll definitely cool. be around. It was so nice to talk to you. We're going to change this card. Oh, yeah, with you? Hell yeah. <laughs> <I'm done. laughs>